Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sprocket Sanctuary. A little different setup on the chair this morning. Instead of the number one for Knox and Bethune, we have a number 10. Today we're celebrating Sprocket's 10th birthday. So she is uh, one happy little pup today. I told her that we're going to go to Kawartha the day for a pup cone. Uh oh. And first time ever, she's barked during service. Hopefully, this won't last too long. <laughs> All right. So let's rock it. All right. Let's just move ahead here. Hopefully, we can get her to settle down and everything will be good to go. I guess we let it. Seeing that it's her birthday, we'll, we'll let her away with this one. <laughs> well, if you haven't had a chance yet this morning, as um, every Sunday, check out the videos that Michael and Nancy Gibson have posted for us. They're absolutely fantastic. Uh, great, great uh, hymns uh, for today. And I thoroughly enjoyed listening to them this morning. And you're right, Paul, it's nice to have a, a higher, warmer, brighter sun and longer days. It's uh, been a long time coming, but we certainly are enjoying them. Sprockton and I were out for her uh, morning constitutional, and uh, we're just marveling in the in the sunshine and, and the wonder of the, of the day. It was fantastic. And thank you everyone for, for joining in, and uh, we'll move forward now in our in our service. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. For thousands of years, Indigenous people have walked in this land on their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. We acknowledge the Chippewa, Iroquois, and Algonquin people, past, present, and their emerging leaders, for their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. February in Canada is also Black History Month. And today we are uh, doing a short focus on Anna Mae Paul. She was born in 1972. She is a Canadian politician, activist, lawyer, and leader of the Green Party of Canada since October 3rd of 2020. Anna Mae is also the first Black Canadian and first Jewish woman to be elected leader of a major federal party in Canada. So Anna Mae, Anna Mae Paul, look her up. Well, through healing waters, through troubled waters, through still waters, through dangerous waters, through welcoming waters, God is with us. Come, let us worship. Let us pray. We are grateful, Creator, for sacred waters that flow in our bodies and through the earth. Water is a powerful force that both creates and destroys, sustains and erodes, deposits and washes away. Yet water is wasted, polluted, and ignored. In this time together, may we seek to restore good relations and remember all the ways your gifts of water is life. As we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, for thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, for those of you who receive our bulletin and other materials, you'll know that our responsive psalm today is Psalm 25. So I encourage you to give that a, a read at some point. And our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. So this is about God's covenant with Noah. God said to Noah and his sons, I am now making my covenant with you and with your descendants and with all living beings, all birds and all animals, everything that came out of the boat with you. And with these words, I make my covenant with you. I promise that never again will all living beings be destroyed by a flood. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. As a sign of this everlasting covenant, which I am making with you and with all living beings, I am putting my bow in the clouds. It will be the sign of my covenant with the world. Whenever I cover the sky with clouds and the rainbow appears, I will remember my promise to you and to all the animals that a flood will never again destroy all living beings. 
when the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between me and all living things on earth. That is the sign of the promise which I am making to all living beings. May the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. Our story for the young at heart today is entitled A Dove's Story. I was in the dark for a long time, sitting on a beam in the corner of the ark. It was hot, sweaty, noisy. So when Noah came down and asked me to leave and find solid ground, I was happy to do it. I searched and searched. It was so good to feel the wind on my wings. And finally, I found a plot of land with a tree on it. And I took a twig and returned it to Noah, and he looked very relieved. Now we are all back on land. The waters are gone. I could have flown away immediately, but I had come to care for Noah and his family, and I wanted to stay nearby. The waters left a big mess. There was so much more work ahead of the land for the land to be made livable once again. We were all tired, but we got to work making nests, making a home. One evening, not long after we exited the ark, something happened. The cool air suddenly became warm and the buzzing bugs were silent. The wind died, clouds opened, and a beam of sun came through. Noah sat in its light. He was silently leaning forward. His head bobbed and nodded from time to time as, as if he was listening intently. And then he looked up and a rainbow appeared. It stretched from one side of the sky to the other, vibrantly shining, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And for a moment, we all looked on. And then the moment passed. The air became cool again, and the bugs started to hum. The wind returned, but the rainbow stayed. It didn't fade. What happened, Father? asked one of Noah's sons. Noah cleared his throat. God just spoke. There was a pause. Everyone stopped. God has made a promise, Noah stated. Not just with us, and he looked at his family now gathered around him, but with everything. And Noah looked past his family to the animals and the trees and the land, and even glanced at me as I sat watching from a nearby tree. Never again. Will God cover everything with water? God loves the earth and everything on it. Every person, every plant, every animal. Everything is included. You, me, and all future generations. Everything is included. And Noah's eyes returned to the rainbow, still bowed in the sky. That, said Noah, pointing is a sign of God's promise. That beautiful re rainbow reminds us of God's promise that love and peace are more powerful than anger and hurt. And every time the rainbow appears, the promise is remembered. What do we do now? Asked one of Noah's sons. Noah just gave a small smile. We'll see, he said. We'll see. Let us pray. God, who created all things, draw us into a closer relationship with you. When life waters threaten to overwhelm us, help us to trust that you are with us all the time. Reorient us away from our poor choices and help us to choose life with you. Amen. Well, the main theme for this week's readings are of water and promise. In our story from Genesis, after the flood, God promises to safeguard the world and to be in deep relationship with creation. And the other story that our lectionary suggests for this day speaks of Jesus as he emerges from the waters of his baptism with God's spirit resting on him, a sign of God's promise. What memories do you have of water? The light spring rains that gently water your newly planted gardens in the spring? 
splashing in the puddles as you take in the smells of the freshly bathed forest after a summer rain. I can remember helping my grandma Powell fill the water pails at the water at the pump and watch her in amazement as she carried both 10 gallon pails up to her house. And there was nothing like a cool, refresh, refreshing glass of water from the well. And there was the swimming in Bass Lake with my family on hot summer days. Oh, and how can I forget that spring day while away at work and my sump pump quit working and my basement flooded or the time my water line cracked on a freezing cold January day and I had to have it dug up and replaced. Yes, water is something that we take for granted, but for many others, this is not the case. Many of our indigenous brothers and sisters do not have access to water, or if they do, it may not be suitable for consumption. The indigenous peoples in Canada use the word sacred when speaking of water. They respect the water as a living thing. Here's a quote from a Musqueam territory elder. As indigenous peoples, we recognize, honor, and respect water as a sacred and powerful gift from the creator. Water, the first living spirit on this earth, gives life to all creation. Water, powerful and pristine, is the lifeblood that sustains life for all peoples, land, and creation. We know that by listening to the songs of the water, all creation will continue to breathe. Our knowledge, laws, and ways of life teach us to be responsible at all times in caring for the sacred gift that connects all life. Our scripture story for today comes just after the story of Noah building a large boat for his family and each land animal that were saved from the floodwaters. But it's here that the rainbow becomes a sign of God's promise to protect the earth. God wants to be in a deep and mutual relationship with all of creation. Yet while the Bible tells us that, God's promise, that God promises to never produce another flood that will destroy the earth, we still experience many natural disasters, hurricanes, floods, tsunamis, and many other forms of storms have caused loss of life and considerable damage to property and creation. So how do we reconcile this promise with our modern day realities? Well, one way might be to continue to believe that God did not bring about this suffering. Rather, it's people's apathy about creation and human choices that destabilize the environment. So this season of Lent could therefore be a time to reorient and reflect on how humans have failed God's good creation. While humans may have destroyed parts of the environment, we may not be able to clean up the environment with only human wisdom. We need to rely on God's wisdom to change our ways. Lent is a time of reflection, of becoming closer to God and reflecting on God's promises. And so believing and having faith in our God and our God's promises, even when life sends us lemons, is the main message for us today in this Bible passage. Even after this major flood, as in all times, God invites us into a deeper relationship. And so as we move into and through the season of Lent, May we remember that God's covenant is not just with humans, but also with all of creation. It is a promise. A promise that no matter how horrible the situation, how destructive the storms of our life may seem, it will eventually come to an end and all will not be lost. God is right beside us, gently whispering, the reminder of God's promise in our lives. Just watch for the rainbow. May it be so. Amen. Our minute for mission this morning is entitled Arwa's Story. Thank you for believing. We all need someone to believe in us, someone who supports our dreams. When you give to mission and service, you are that someone. 
Here's one story of how your belief and support make all the difference. Three years ago, Arwa was a Palestinian refugee who had just arrived in Montreal. She had made a harrowing journey traveling from Saudi Arabia through New York City with three children in tow. It wasn't easy for me. I was a single mom in a new country with new people. I was struggling for housing and looking for a job. It wasn't easy at all, she says. Arwa sought help at Montreal City Mission, an outreach ministry your mission and service gifts support. And there, her whole family found belonging. Arwa's children made friends, and she benefited from training programs and events. It wasn't long before Arwa gathered a group of women together to form a catering cooperative called Women Weaving Their Dreams. She says, I hope to see more and more women getting the same chance to have this better life for their family. The group, Women Weaving for Dreams, weaving their dreams, was going strong and were becoming more financially secure when COVID-19 struck. No stranger to hardship, Arwa was determined to help others through the pandemic. She initiated a sewing circle to make masks. A group, the group made over 500 masks a week and distributed them to the homeless shelters and frontline workers. I was so happy to help people, says Arwa. Those extraordinary leadership skills landed her a full-time job at Montreal City Mission. She says, I consider myself a lucky person that I got to know this organization. It has become not only my full-time job, not only my provider, it has become my home. I hope to see more and more women getting the same chance to have this better life for their family, she says. I wanted a country that could hold me and hug me my whole life long, and I found it in Canada. Your gifts through mission and service don't just support dozens of organized. Your gifts through mission and service don't just support dozens of organizations like Montreal City Mission across the country. They also support people's dreams for a better life. Amazing people who make their communities and our country stronger. Please give generously through mission and service. Show incredible community leaders like Arwa that you believe in them. Thank you for your support. My friends, I just want to thank all of you who continue to give through the PAR contributions. For those of you who send in checks and um, have signed up for PAR, thank you so much. And uh, for those of you who would like to make a donation to either Bethune or Knox United Church, please let me know and I will put you in touch with our, our treasurers for each congregation. And there's also a donation button on the Bethune Facebook page. So, I'm going to work so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to work so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. Thanks for all you do, your times, your talents, your service. Let us pray. Creator God, in all that we do, all that we say, and all that we give, may we live out your covenant to care for all of creation. Amen. We move now to our prayers of the people, and because this is a public forum, I don't say names out loud over this through this service. But if there is someone for whom you would like to have prayer said, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, either through a, a message. Um, you can Facebook message me, you can email me, you can phone me, but reach out please and I'd be happy to add whatever name and person to my prayer list for you. Let us pray. To you, O oh God, we pray. In you, O oh God, we trust. For you, O oh God, we wait. Lead us so that we may always follow in your way. Teach us so that we may remain steadfast and faithful. Remind us of your covenant so that we may be a covenantal people, striving to care for all of creation as you care for us. We pray for the place where there is for the places where there is brokenness and discord in creation.
We pray for where there is death and dying. We pray for where there is isolation, exile, and forced migration. Loving God, please send reminders of your love and where possible, help us to be your messengers. Amen. Well, my friends, love God in all things equally, for God is equal, equally near to all creation, and to all creatures. And among these creatures, God does not love any one person more than any other. God is all and is one. All things become nothing but God. To apprehend God in all things, for God is in all things. If we spend enough time with the tiniest creature, even a caterpillar, we would never need sermon. So full of God is every creature. Go and spend time in God's creation and in the amazing presence of God in all things. Amen. Well, this is definitely the perfect day to spend time with God in God's creation. May the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Grant you peace, perfect peace, courage in every endeavor. Lift up your eyes and seek God's face. And God's grace forever. May the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Well, if there's anyone else out there celebrating a birthday today, happy birthday. And I know there's other February birthdays as well. So if you have a February birthday, enjoy, celebrate. And we'll send you back to Little Sprocket here as we make our way into this beautiful Sunday. Have a wonderful day, my friends. God bless. <laughs>